Hi everybody! The Butterfly House is celebrating National Pollinator Week with a series of short videos all about pollinators, who they are, and why they're important. My name is Chris Hartley. I'm the Science Education Coordinator for the Butterfly House, and I'd like to welcome you to my garden at my house for a quick video about what pollination is and why pollination is important. So to really understand pollination, the first thing we need to know is, what is pollination? Pollination is when pollen moves from the male parts of one flower to the female parts of another flower. In fact, if you look at this lily flower, you can clearly see the pollen on the stamens or the male parts of the flower. And what happens in pollination is pollen is actually transported from the pollen-bearing stamens to the female parts of another flower. Once it's there, the receptive flower will use the pollen to fertilize the seeds so that the seeds grow and become mature seeds that can then fall to the ground or be spread somewhere else to grow into a new plant. Very often those seeds are wrapped up inside a fruit which we and other animals really love to eat. So besides pollination for fruit though, pollination of course allows vegetables, everything from lettuce and celery and anything else to reproduce because they all also have seeds and need pollinators too. So pollen is not always big and showy, but it is always there. In fact, if you look at these purple cone flowers that are growing right next to me, you can see the pollen on them too. The pollen's going to appear as little yellow dots, and in fact, each one of those little yellow dots is an individual flower. What's interesting about cone flowers and other things in the aster family is that the flowers are grouped into heads or composite flowers, and those composite flowers are composed of dozens, if not a hundred, individual little flowers. Each one will get pollinated, and each one will make a seed of its own. So think of something like a sunflower, and it's full of seeds that compose the whole head when they're all pollinated, because each one was an individual flower at the start. So that's what pollination is. And you may be asking yourself, well, what is the end result of pollination? And that is a fruit. Now this is a really good example of a fruit, an apple. The apple has a stem end. This is where it was attached to the tree. And at one point this apple was a flower before it was pollinated. So the flower was growing from the stem. And if you look at the other end of the apple, you see these little leaves, petals, what are those? Well, in reality, those are all the remains of the petals and the other flower parts. This part though, was also part of the flower. This was the female part of the flower. And once that flower got pollinated, the female parts swell up, the seeds inside mature, and it becomes a fruit. Every other fruit in the world is like this. Though some, think of maybe a blackberry, are composed of a bunch of individual little fruits. But whatever shape or form the fruits take, they all result from a flower that was once pollinated. So now, we know what pollination is, how does pollination happen? Pollination sometimes happens by the wind or by the water, but usually pollination happens by an animal of some kind. Easily three-fourths or more of all of our food crops depend on an animal pollinator. So another way to say that is we depend on an animal pollinator for three out of every four bites of food that we take. That means pollinators are very important to us. So for the rest of our week together, as we go through National Pollinator Week, we're going to be talking about the bees and the butterflies and moths, the flies and the beetles and all the other animals, including birds and bats, that make pollination happen and that give us the food that we eat. We'll talk about how we depend on each other and how you can help pollinators thrive around your home. So we hope that you'll join us for the rest of our Pollinator Week video, and we'll see you tomorrow with another look at pollinators.